the Gospel of John chapter 18. And uh, this is a scene now, Jesus uh, has been betrayed, he's been taken into captivity by uh, the priest and has been presented before Pilate. And uh, you'd probably be saying, well, pastor, this is Christmas. We're not, this is not Easter. It's not Good Friday. Uh, how is that? We're talking about the death of Christ. No, I want you to see something here uh, in this interrogation where Pilate was interrogating Jesus. Jesus gives a, a summary of, of his life and intent and purpose of why he came to this earth. So uh, let's have a look in John chapter 18. And if we could be standing and honoring of reading God's word, let's do so. John chapter 18. And we're going to take our reading from verse number 33. Find your place there, John 18. And verse number 33, the Bible says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Well, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth, my voice. They said again, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you at this time. Lord, we pray that you would calm our hearts. Lord, thank you for the singing, the worship, the rejoicing. It has taken place already in this service. We have been truly blessed so far. Lord, we ask that now as your word is open, that you would also open our, our, our eyes of understanding. Pray, Lord, that you would minister this truth to the heart of every individual. Lord, thank you for these worshippers that have come into your house today. I pray, Lord, that you would truly minister truth to us. Help us to understand the reality of why Christ came into this world. So Lord, we need your help today. That we be transformed by your word. That we be transformed by your spirit. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, Christmas is an exciting time of year, is it not? As exciting as it is, it is also very troublesome. I mean, people begin to worry that Christmas is just about upon us. You know, we begin to think, can you believe it that Christmas is only, you know, five weeks away? Can you believe it's three weeks away? Can you believe it's a week away? And uh, those of you who haven't done your Christmas shopping, uh, you have a frantic week ahead of you. And uh, that's, that's the kind of pressure we, we are under in Christmas. Uh, we think about the going to and fro and, and trying to figure out what would be the right Christmas gift for that individual. Uh, do you know someone in your life who is very hard to buy for? Uh, you know, I get told all the time by my family, you are the hardest person to work out what we would buy you. Like, well, we have no idea. Can you give us some clues? Can you give us some ideas? And, and, uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, people fret. They worry about, what kind of gift can I bring? What kind of gift can I buy? And uh, so we spend all our time uh, trying to work out the gifting that we're going to give. Now, let, let me say, there's nothing wrong with giving gifts. But I like to, I like to give a gift. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, be able to buy my wife or my children, or buy people whom I love, to give them something over Christmas. But Christmas really is not all about presents. How many people would be disappointed if they did not get a present this Christmas? Uh, you know, or weren't able to, to buy a present for someone this Christmas? 
You see, we, we seem to be caught up in the hype of uh, the, the Christmas rush, the Christmas retail buzz. Uh, you know, it's said, it's estimated that the retail trade in Australia in this time of year, despite the interest rate hikes, right? People are under great stress with mortgages now. It is estimated that the Christmas sales or Christmas shopping that will take now and, you know, Boxing Day sales to be about $60 billion. $60 billion to be traded over the next few weeks. And so it's big business for retail and for commerce. And that somehow we get caught up with this is what we do around Christmas. Christmas is all about, you know, going be able to buy the right things. And, and not only that, we, we get caught up with the festivities of it. You know, how many Christmas parties have we, have we been invited to? Uh, you know, our work Christmas party, our family Christmas party, our ministry Christmas parties. And so uh, all we're thinking about is the festivities of it all. But I want us to really consider today uh, G- what Jesus said about the reason of why he came. Uh, I I understand that we enjoy uh, to have family time and and enjoy to be together, uh, but I want us to remind ourselves and remind each other as to why. What is this great truth? What is this great truth that Jesus told us about for the reason of his coming? You know, when you talk to children about Christmas, uh, that will tell you, oh, you know, it's about uh, receiving a gift and giving a gift. Uh, some in the world will tell you that Christmas is about Santa Claus and, and uh, you know, Santa and taking pictures with Santa. And if you're good, if you've been good or naughty or nice, that will depend whether what Santa will give you for, for Christmas that year. And, and uh, so we are all hyped up uh, in thinking of Christmas, everything else besides what the purpose or what was the reason for his coming. And uh, this text that we read this morning uh, is a summation. Jesus, having lived his life, uh, he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. Uh, and now he's been, uh, he's been apprehended incorrectly, wrongfully, uh, has been wrongfully tried, and now is in the presence of Pilate, Pontius Pilate. And there is dialogue between Pontius Pilate and Jesus. And he's asking him the question, are you really a king? Now, Jesus never denied the fact that he was a king. He, he asked him, uh, did you work this out of yourself or did somebody else tell you? Uh, you can understand that Pontius Pilate was a Roman governor. He understood his loyalty and he understood what it meant that to be uh, faithful to Caesar. And, and now the hearing that there is another king, is this going to be a political problem for, for him in his jurisdiction? But as he dialogues with Jesus, he finds out that how could this man be really a king and stand humiliated before him? Jesus uh, begins to tell him that his kingdom is not of this earth. If his kingdom was of this earth, uh, then his servants would have surely fought for him and would never allowed him to be at this point where he is now standing before Pilate. Pilate continues to question Jesus about his kingdom. And Jesus said to him, thou sayest that I am a king. I want you to know today that when we think about Jesus in a manger, we think of his humility, we think about being born into poverty, but Jesus is king. He is Lord of lords and king of kings. And he was willing to leave his royal throne for a reason and for a purpose. And so Jesus begins to tell uh, uh, tell Pilate of this very fact. He said, to this end was I born. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. You know, Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13, he charges Timothy to be faithful, and he charges him, he says that as Christ gave a good confession before Pontius Pilate. What was that good confession? The good confession was this very truth, this very fact, that Jesus was born, and for this cause he came into the world, that he should bear witness unto the truth. And so today I want us to consider this statement that Jesus made. Let's have a look 
together this morning the, the purpose of Christ's coming. Uh, what did he come to do? What did he come to achieve? I want you to note this morning that this was Christ's royal commission. It was his royal mission to earth. You know, when man fell into sin, that did not take God by surprise. Did you know that? When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree and plunged the, the humanity and all of creation into sin and into this destruction, uh, God did not sit there and he was worried about what was going to happen next. See, the Bible tells us clearly that God from the beginning had a plan. God already knew and understood how he was going to redeem humanity, how he was going to save them and deliver them from sin, and, and how he was going to win back his creation. And so here we have Jesus, King Jesus, uh, who was sent on a royal mission for the recovery, restoration, forgiveness of humanity. And so Jesus gives that summation in his statement to Pilate. He says these words to him, he says, to this end was I born. Now this statement here, to this end was I born, tells us of his humanity. And Jesus came into this world in a miraculous divine way. And he was not born from the seed of man. But you know the story, the Bible tells us that the angel appeared unto Mary and said to her that she would be with child and the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will conceive and have a baby and call him Jesus. Uh, his coming into the world was divinely miraculous. Uh, he did not come as uh, you and I have come into this world where, uh, you know, uh, we had a father and a mother. No, uh, he came to be human, came through a virgin uh, person, uh, uh, Mary was her name. And uh, so the, he was uh, divinely conceived by Mary. What a miraculous birth. What a miraculous conception that was. You see, he had to be divinely conceived because if he had a, an earthly father, had he come from Joseph, he would have been just like you and me. He would have been born into sin, just like you and me. And every human being, every person who is born in this world, with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ, was born into sin. You see, we have inherited the sin nature from our forefathers. We've inherited the sin nature of Adam. Adam sinned, and the Bible tells us that because of one man's sin, and so sin, and so death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And so it's very clear today uh, that we understand his coming was divinely unique and different to all of us. When he was born, uh, when he was conceived, he was conceived in a miraculous way, totally different to the way you and I have been conceived. He was born in a manger, in a lowly place. Now, we look at a manger, we, we like these nativity scenes, uh, we like the, uh, you know, to look at this little manger, and some of you like, uh, you know, have a nativity scene maybe in your house as you celebrate Christmas, but there was nothing glorious and beautiful about a manger. I mean, it was a place where animals fed from. Uh, it was where they put their food, and uh, it was there where uh, the cows would come, and the, and the oxen and the donkeys would come and feed and eat. And, and so it was not a comfortable little bassinet that Jesus was laid into. He was laid into a manger. Uh, I, 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 I struggle to conceive in my mind how royalty, when you think about royalty, being born and to lay in a manger. I mean, you think about the royal family and when they have their kids, let me tell you, they are not being born in a stable. And they're not being delivered and put into a manger. I mean, they have the best of the best. And when you think about royalty, you think about they need to have the best of the best. But here is royal Jesus, who left his throne, was willing to come to this earth, to take on the form of man. He took on the form of man. He took on the likeness of a servant, being found in fashion as a man. And he, being a servant, humbled himself. Humbled himself. We learn great humility 
of what Jesus did in his coming to earth. Because he loved you and he loved me and understood his Father's divine plan and will to, re to rescue all of humanity. And so Christ was willing to lay down all his glories, to limit some of his uh, some of his uh, uh, deity in, the, in a way that uh, when he came to this earth, he limited himself to the, and confined himself to what humanity is about. Now, he, he did not stop being God. He was still God here on earth. But he took on the form of humanity. That's why the Bible tells us that he identifies with all our infirmities. Christ coming to this earth and taking on human flesh suffered the things that you and I suffer. He understands your sorrow. He understands your trouble. He understands your pain. He understands your tiredness, your weariness. He understands your hunger, your thirst. He understands it all because he came to this earth and was born in the likeness of man. I'm thankful as we remember this time that this was his mission and he was obedient to it. That he came and he was born. You know, Jesus was not a man. Jesus was not a good man that because of his good works and because of his striving and because of his, uh, uh, you know, uh, a ministry, he worked his way up the line to become a God. Jesus is God who decided to come into human flesh. Now, why? Why would he choose to come and be in human form. Well, you know, man has a problem. Each one of us has a problem with sin. We were born into that sin. And the wages of sin, or the payment for that sin, is death. But he comes, Jesus, who is without any sin. And now becomes the captain, the representative of all of humanity. He comes and he lays his life down. He was born to take on human flesh that he would represent you and me by his death and his burial and his resurrection, he made payment for sin and was resurrected unto newness of life. And by that same power, and God is able today to deliver you and me. Jesus has made the payment for your sin and my sin. And he has become our representative and the captain of our salvation. How many people say amen to that? We're thankful for that. As you think of Christmas today, think about why he came into this world. He said, I was born to this end. I he was born to this end. He was royalty, he was king, but he came and humbled himself for your sake and my sake. Not only was he born, he said also that, and for this cause came I into the world. For this cause came I into the world. This tells us of his divine commission. Uh, he came into this world. This clearly speaks to us of the fact that he existed prior to him coming. Uh, Jesus did not just come on the scene when he was born. No, uh, Jesus existed eternally before and will continue to exist forever. He is the eternal God. Uh, he, there is no beginning or end for him. And uh, when we begin to think about the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, we think about just a man who is here on earth. But let me tell you, he existed prior to his birth. Uh, he was at the time of creation. All things came into existence by him. And without him, nothing was made. And I'm just thankful that we have a great God and a great Savior. I'm thankful that he is eternally God. And when he was here on earth, he did not stop being God. Uh, he was God and man at the same time. And God did not stop existing because Jesus came and took on human flesh. You've got people who say to you, well, what, what happened to God uh, then if he came to this earth and became man? He never stopped being God. Uh, yes, he may have refrained of some of his uh, attributes and abilities to do so that he would live amongst humanity, but he never stopped being God. And so Jesus says, for this reason have I come into the world. He came here with a divine mission, a divine commission. There was a reason why he came. 
You know, a lot of people, when you ask them about the birth of Christ or the life of Christ, and, and you say, what purpose was it for? Was it really just a story about, uh, you know, a man that, that was born that did, uh, you know, great works and good deeds and, and then uh, had opposition who hated him and, and because uh, they were political figures and they thought he was a threat to them. And that's why they tried to dispose of him and, and he was crucified and was buried. And somehow some of his disciples said that he rose again. But we are unclear about that. Let me tell you, if Christ's resurrection really never took place, there would be no Christendom. There would be no Christianity. And we wouldn't even be sitting here today. Uh, this would have been all a waste of time. Uh, you know, I said to, to the critics, I, I said, well, if, if you want a defunct Christianity, you must disprove the resurrection. You must disprove the resurrection if there is no Christianity. For you to say there's no such thing as Christianity. You see, every person who's tried to come up with different theories and ideas, uh, they've all been defunct. Uh, you know, we know, we know for certain the Bible tells us that Jesus appeared uh, to Mary, he appeared to his disciples, he appeared to 500 of his disciples, and he appeared to Paul as well, of someone who had an undue time, and uh, they have testified of the resurrected Savior. You may ask me today, how do I know that Jesus lives? Well, as the songwriter says, he lives, he lives, because he lives within my heart. You know, Jesus today is still transforming lives. He came to this earth with a mission, and that is to rescue humanity, to rescue you, to rescue me from eternal condemnation. You see, the law of God judges every sin. The law of God has condemned us, uh, condemned every sinner, each one of us, because of our inherent nature of sinfulness. And let me tell you, we've done wrong. There's nobody here who can sit in this auditorium and will say, you know, I've lived a life without sin. I have, I have no fault. I have not transgressed God's law. Uh, Jesus said these words. He said, if you just thought about a woman, you've committed adultery. Jesus took the law of God and made it even higher. He said, do you hate your brother? You have committed murder. I mean, uh, the stakes are so high that, that no man was able to meet the righteousness of God. We've all come short of it. And so God sent Christ on a mission. He sent him into this world that he would save sinners like you and me. Jesus came with a purpose he came with a, 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 a mission that was entrusted to him that he would do this. And what, what was his mission? Well, the Bible tells us that it was committed to him, this very fact, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Jesus had a divine commitment. He came to this earth. He did not come to be just a teacher. People, you ask people, what do you think about Jesus? Well, he was a great teacher. Oh yes, he taught some great things. But Jesus' purpose in coming was not just to be a teacher. He did not just come to be a great healer. He did not come to be a great leader. He came to rescue people like you and me. Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to, as he says, to bear witness unto the truth. You know, Jesus, when he came... He revealed truth to us. What did he reveal? The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, he said that he, no man has seen God. No man has seen God. But Jesus came to reveal the Father to us. He came to show us exactly who God is. And he came to reveal to us that God is interested in each one of us. Each one. God is interested in your life. God is interested that you would not perish, that you would not go to an eternal condemnation in a place called hell, a fiery lake, where you were judged for your sin forever and ever. He came to deliver you from that. So Jesus comes to bear this truth about a loving father. He tells us in John chapter 3, John chapter 3 and you know this great verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, that's the reason why Jesus came. 
He came to bear this great and glorious truth that God loves us, God loves you, God loves me, God wants to deliver you, God wants to give you eternal life, He wants to gift it to you, and you can't earn it. If it was possible for you to please God by your good works, if it was possible for you to make atonement, and make a make retribution for the things that you've done wrong, then that this commission, this royal mission that Jesus was on, was a waste of time. Now think about it. If you were able to pay for your own sins uh, by the kind of life that you would live, then uh, this mission that Jesus came on was really a waste of time. Reality is that none of us could pay for our sin. None of us could deliver ourselves. None of us can save ourselves. Or we needed the mighty power of God. We needed the mighty power of Jesus that he would raise us, that he would quicken us, that he would save us and give us this eternal life. For this end, he came to bear witness of this truth. Now, folks, I want you to understand that this is what Jesus came to tell us. He said, uh, uh, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, now let me tell you, this is truth that Jesus is revealing to the world. To all of humanity, he's revealing the truth of the fact that God is a loving Father, that man is under condemnation of sin, and the only way we can make it to the Father is through Christ. This is revelation of truth. This is truth. Jesus came and spoke of himself and spoke about the way man can come to the Father. And he came to bear this truth to all of humanity. You know what the problem is? Humanity is lost in its own thinking. And uh, the, Satan, the opposer of God, the opposer of humanity, has plunged humanity into darkness and confusion about how they could honor God and how they can make it to heaven. You know, if you take all the religions of this world, you can boil them all down into two buckets. One that will say to you, you must work to earn salvation. One tells you that you be good, do all these things, and somehow, maybe, uh, you know, nobody knows, but maybe you might have done enough and you can get to heaven. But the truth that is revealed through the person of Jesus Christ is that you and I could receive forgiveness of sin and the promise of eternal life when we trust in Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus spoke and declared that he was the way. He is the truth. He's a revealer of this very fact of this truth. Now, we must pay attention and we must adhere to what he says. He revealed and he bore witness to this truth. Now, you know, we all like truth, don't we? None of us like confusion. None of us like doubt. Have you ever had doubt in your heart and in your mind? And somebody's talking to you and, and you're sitting there thinking, hmm, I'm not sure that you're telling me the full story. You ever got your son and your daughter and you're trying to have an inquisition about what took place? And, you know, they cleverly try to give you some truth and maybe put a spin on some things and, and they, really what they're trying to do is they're, they're saying, well, I want to tell you the truth, but really it's not complete. You know that a half a truth is still a lie? And now we're, we're very good. Let, let, let's, uh, let's be honest here. We're all great masters at how we can masquerade or change the truth a little bit. It's still truth, but you know, it's changed. I don't want you to know everything. But you know when God speaks, when Jesus speaks, he speaks absolute truth. There's no shadow in what he says. There is no maligning behind what he says. He's not trying to create doubt and confusion. You know, the one who creates doubt and confusion is Satan himself. But Jesus always brings clarity and truth. If you today are in great doubt and confusion, why not come to Jesus Come to know him this season. He is the light that came into the world. The Bible tells us that he came into this world. This light came into darkness, but men hated this light. They rejected this light. You know why they rejected it? Because their deeds were evil. 
They did, they did not want to be uh, uh, exposed for who they were. And, and that's reality today too. Uh, that many of us don't want to come to the truth because we know it will expose us. It will expose our heart. It will expose our lives. It will expose us for who we really are. But truth will always set you on the right path. Truth will never mislead you. Truth will never disappoint you. Truth will always get you to the right destiny. And my friends, today, I, I'm just inviting you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, take this time for this season to understand why He came. And He came to bear witness of this very truth for you. That through Him, you could have eternal life. Through Him, if you just trust in Him, if you come to know Him, if you come into this relationship with Him as He invites you today, He's willing to forgive you of your sin. He has power to forgive sin. Uh, he has power to give you life. He is God. He's the giver of life. He is able to rescue you and move you out of condemnation. The Bible says, therefore, there's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Hey, you want to escape the wrath of the law of God? Then come to Christ today. Come to him. He came into this world for this reason, for this purpose, to this end, that he would bear that he would bear witness to this truth. If you're looking anywhere else, you're looking in the wrong place. If you're looking anywhere else, you're going to be disappointed. There are many voices in this world that will tell you, this is the way. Go this way. Do this. Come to this church. Come and do this. Join this denomination. Join this group. There are many voices in this world, but you must search for the voice of truth. Because Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Truth will always set you free. Christ came to bear witness of that truth. Now Jesus says this, and we'll conclude. He said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Here is a, an invitation to Pilate. Pilate, if you were one of, the, if you were a follower of mine, you would understand this truth, and you would understand my voice. My friends, this morning, if you have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have come to know truth. You have come to know truth. The lie of the devil is to conceal and try to distract. And rob you of the truth of God. But let me tell you, the truth of Christ is a beacon of light and hope that will deliver you. And will give you eternal life. And you will hear the voice of Jesus and you will be a follower of Christ when you obey his truth. That's the way to be a Christian. A Christian is not a man because he was born into a Christian home. A man is not a Christian because his birth certificate says that he, uh, you know, he is a, of any of Christian denomination. No, no. A man is a Christian when he makes a decision to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Has entered into that door and has received Christ as his saviour. That's real Christianity. You see, the reason why we're, so many people are frustrated with Christianity and they're looking elsewhere and they're looking at other religions because they're frustrated with nominal Christianity that is not really working. It's not transforming lives. It's not helping me. It's not changing me. Who is this God? And, and why am I still in my sin? And why am I still in this darkness? And why am I still unclear about eternity? You see, Jesus, he came with this royal commission to bear witness of the truth, to be a light to the world, to set the way for us, to show us exactly who the Father is, who are we, and how we desperately need him. And so my friend today I invite you. I invite you that you would take a step of faith in that direction. Of believing on Jesus Christ. This is the reason why he came. Hey, he didn't come just to show us an example of a good life. And I'm thankful for the life of Christ. And so we ought to walk in his footsteps. But he came with this mind. With, to this end he came. He was born. He was born to die. He came with this one purpose, that he would die for the sins of all humanity. 
And I'm just thankful for that great work of salvation. Are you? I'm thankful of a, a God who really loved me when I was an enemy. I was in my sin against him. I had turned my back against him. I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing. I live life my own way. I'm thankful that he still had compassion and love and said, I want to rescue you and deliver you. I'm thankful that no matter what sin that we have committed, it doesn't matter what you've done. Some people say to me, you know what? I've got to get my life right before I come to Christ. No, 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 no. Let Christ meet you where you are right now. And let him deliver you and change your life. You, you know why? Because you will not be able to change yourself. You, you, you will still have that sinful nature. And if you were to die in your sin, you will be under God's righteous judgment upon you. Come to Jesus. That's the reason why he came. He said, for this cause was I born, for this, uh, for this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Christ came that he would bear witness unto this very truth. Today, what will you do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him in this time? Of period, in this time? Oh, we, we'd like to have the family gatherings. Oh, yes, we'd like to give Christmas gifts and we'd like to make sure we have a, a, a Christmas gift under the Christmas tree. Oh, we, we want to have the festivities. We, we want to have a good time together. But, but reality is... What have you done with the truth of Jesus? What are you going to do with the truth of Jesus this Christmas? Why did he come? What is this whole story about? We can sit and contemplate. We can sit and pacify our conscience and say, no, 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 I'm happy the way I am. But let me tell you, one day this truth will judge you. The Bible says that there's a day that is coming that Jesus, that God has exalted the name of Christ and that because of him, he's highly exalted every knee will bow of things of heaven, things on earth and things under the earth. There's a time where each one of us, if you don't bow to Christ today, you will bow to him in, your, in that day of judgment. You will acknowledge that he is king, but he is going to condemn you for all of eternity. Why not come today and bow the knee? Why not come today and receive him as that savior? Why not today acknowledge and agree with God and say, God, I agree with your truth. I agree that you're righteous and holy. I agree that I'm a sinner. I agree that I can't do anything that can save me. I agree that Jesus died. He came and died for my sin. He was buried and he rose again. And by that same miraculous power of resurrection, you're able to give me also eternal life and newness of life. Lord, I believe and I trust Christ today. I believe that truth. You come to know that truth and it will change your life greatly. Not only will you be promised an abundant life here on earth, but you'll be given eternal life to be with him forever. That's why he came. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should, should bear witness unto the truth. And you know, as Christians, we must live in this truth. Sometimes we, we're happy to receive salvation but we want to live life just the way we like it. Reality is that the word of God, which is all truth, thy word is truth, has revealed to us exactly what God wants from us and how we ought to live. God has declared his truth to you as a Christian. Why are you running away from it? Why are you ignoring it? You see, it is that same truth that one day you will be rewarded for when you get to heaven. If you live faithfully according to the truth of God's word, God is going to honor you for that and is going to give you rewards for it. Why are you not giving heed to the truth of God? There's much truth that God has revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ and in his word, the Bible. How much of that truth are you following? How much of that truth have you made part of your life? Because if you are, 
then you will hear his voice. And if you're rejecting the truth of God's word, God's voice, the voice of Christ, is going to be quite mute to you. Obedience to the truth of God's word is what is necessary. May God help us today as we examine our heart. What have we done with the truth of Jesus? Will you follow him today? Will you make a decision to follow Jesus? Will you make a decision to live by this truth that he's revealed to you? What would you do with the truth of Jesus this Christmas? Let's bow our heads in prayer.